God's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love, and we are bringing the word today. And I hope it's encouraging. I hope it lifts your spirits. Because sometimes we got to remember who God is. We got to remember how our obstacles are not obstacles at all. They're just little lightweight hurdles to get around, hop over, or step over. And God will lower the obstacles the harder we depend on him. And we le- we lean on him. We rest in him. It's like getting home from work. You're tired. You got a cramp in your hip. And you just kick back in that recliner. And you just give yourself permission to rest and relax. And not have to do, 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 do. But you relax and rest. Sometimes you got to sit on your do nothing and do nothing for a minute and let God minister to you when you come out from all the busyness of life. All right, so we are going to read Hebrews chapter 4. So go with me there. Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse 8, 8 through 16. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Doesn't that sound like an oxymoron? Labor to enter into the rest. But it takes effort to force ourselves to rest. It really does. Because, you know, we want to put out all our fires ourselves. And God's saying, be still and know that I am God. Let's finish reading that that verse. All right. So, Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yeah. See, we forget to do that sometimes. We go from day to day, from challenge to challenge, from obstacle to obstacle, from conflict to conflict. And we are out there with our fire extinguisher. And we're out there with our baseball bats and our weapons of of mass destruction. That tongue, that bell clapper between those lips. We've got all kind of weapons at our disposal. And we forget. We don't have to fight. The battle is whose? The Bible says the battle is the Lord's. But we forget and think it's our battle to fight. We got to put up our dukes. We got to open our mouth wide and tell somebody, give them a 10 pieces of our mind. We got to handle this and we got to handle that. And if we don't worry about it and we don't stay up all night trying to figure it out, that the solution ain't going to come. Well, baby cakes, that right there comes from unbelief. All that worry you're doing. Yeah, you're basically telling the Lord, yeah, I know what you said, Lord, but I ain't all that convinced. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Every time you worry about stuff. See, this is what I found that the Lord does when we're going through our life's issues. Because life happens. That's all all it's to it. Life happens. 
There are times when something happens and your initial response is an emotional response. You either get upset, you get angry, you experience sudden fear, anxiety, you're up in arms. And then you have to remember what Psalms 46 says, be still and know that I am God. So when you remind yourself, okay, wait, 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 God's in control. I'm in his blessing. I'm not sitting against him. He's not punishing me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. He is for me, not against me. You hear what I'm saying? So knowing all that, knowing I have the promises of God working in my life, I need to settle myself down. I need to calm my little nerves and remind myself who God is. And when I remind myself of who God is, and I take that minute to still my spirit, and then at times you have to ask God for help to get still because we tend to be high strong about problems. So, okay, Lord, Lord, instead of me reacting and instead of me starting to cry, would you give me peace and let me know, reassure my soul that you've got this, that you've got my back, you've got all this handled. And when you take that moment, you will find the peace is right there. Everything inside is perfectly still. Let me give you a quick example. There was one time I kept hearing the sound of this water and I didn't know where it was coming from. But I kept hearing this water, water, water. And I went outside. It was nighttime. And the whole driveway was soaking wet. And I'm wondering, where's the water coming from? I can't afford a $200 water bill. My mind starts going to, oh, no. And then I had to remind myself, wait, wait, wait. God blessed you to move here. Settle your nerves. God has given you too many scriptures letting you know he's for you. So knowing that God is for me, let me see what God's going to do. Lord, how should I handle this? Bam, call the water company. Uh, duh, thank you, Lord. Dum diddy dum dum wouldn't even thought of that one. So I call the water company, let them know I have a leak. They come, I don't know where the leak's coming from. The man comes out. He's right there outside of my kitchen window. There's a little knob at, on the ground that I never even noticed. He just takes a little mechanism and turns it. And it stopped it just like that. Well, I ended up paying maybe 40 or $50 more than I normally do for a water bill. But the Lord even provided that. So I didn't have to hit the panic button. Because I stilled my spirit. Be still. You have to still yourself sometimes. You have to labor in to enter into his rest. You got to fight that fear. And say, okay, before I start reacting, let me be still. Lord. And the first thing you do is pray about it. That's the first thing. Because some of y'all, if you don't pray about it, you're going to make matters worse. Why? Because you're reactionary. That's why. You run around trying to do this and do that, and you end up tripping over something because you're moving too fast. Now you broke an elbow or you broke your hip. Now you got a whole other set of problems to deal with. You got to still yourself. Because, see, Satan will use your emotions against you. And your emotions can make you or break you, baby. So you allow God to use your emotions for you. And you take control and ask God to settle your nerves and, and get you in a mindset of seeking him before you react. All right. Now, let's move on to the next. <laughs> let's go to the scripture, Hebrews chapter 6. We have to remember that God, when he promises, uh, I was telling Lynn a little, a little bit earlier how uh, one of the things that uh, 
my chancellor said uh, during one of our classes is that when God promises you something, that's the one that really stuck with me. When God promises you something, the ink never dries on his promises. The ink is still wet. Even if he promised it to you 40 years ago, 10 years ago, 30 years ago, the ink never dries. And we, some of us have received promises from the Lord. And we actually think because time has gone by that his promises have come to pass and they no longer stand. They no longer hold any weight. They don't hold any water. But we also forget the scripture that says God is not a man that he should lie. We forget that as well. You see, <laughs> we literally have to labor to enter into his rest. Because if we don't, baby, life will have us running over here, running over there. Oh, no, there's a problem over here. Oh, what do I do? And we're, we're almost breaking our necks. Trying to handle it. And God's telling us, shh, be still, settle down. What's wrong? What are you all up in arms for? You got me. I knew the problem was coming before it ever reared its ugly head. Don't you think I've already got an answer for it? So why are you hitting the panic button? No matter what the outcome and this is the hard part for us to live with because a lot of us get angry with God when it doesn't come out the way we want it to. No matter what the outcome, God is still in control. God's wisdom, God's knowledge, God's love for you and his promise, his purposes are being fulfilled through hook or crook, through good or bad, because all things work together for the good to them that love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Now listen to this. Some of you think you love God, so let's iron that one out to those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Some of you think you love God. But as soon as God doesn't measure up to what you expect from him, hmm, you're ready to write him off your list. He's the first one you get angry with. He's the first one you're getting ready to chuck. Because it's like, well, you know, hey, you know, I got enough with people lying to me. I don't need God saying he's going to do this and then it doesn't work out. I'm tired of my life being like that. I'm tired of disappointments. Well, guess what? Sometimes. God allows you to suffer disappointments because he wants you to see where you really stand. See, there's a thing called stick to relentless faith, relentless commitment. And when you prove yourself to not just be God's fair weather friend, God proves himself the same. And that's where some of us fall short of the blessings of God. Because as soon as the weather goes bad, we run south. As soon as the weather turns, we take a turn for the worse. And we cut the, he's the first one we cut loose. See, when you're in a relationship with God, you're in it because you want to know him. Once you start knowing him and you experience that love and you connect with him, you're in it for the love. You're in it for the long haul, just like you are when you say, till death do I part with your spouse. And you're in it for the long haul. But it's hard to be that way with God, isn't it? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Because as much as we want to believe that we have faith in him, 
you be surprised how many of you born again Christians filled with the Holy Ghost, that with a mighty burning fire, talking in tongues, prophesying, working miracles, are the first ones to get angry at God. The first ones that don't want to talk to him when he doesn't line up to your plan. But you forget, God has another plan outside of yours. His ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher. We can't even attain to what he's planning out. We can't even fathom, wrap our little pea brains around what he's working. No, we can't figure him out. So we get upset with him. Because we don't realize that maybe because my husband died, maybe there's an anointing that's going to be imparted on me and now I'm going to really go forth in ministry. Maybe because my child died, maybe there's an insight the Lord wants to teach me through that experience and through that hurt that I'm to minister to other mothers who have lost their children. Huh? Maybe when that child died, they didn't feel it, the pain that we thought they were feeling. Maybe their body was responding, but their spirit was long gone, baby. And they're not even there like you think they are. They're not in that body that's on life support. You just never know how God works things out. God is merciful. God is kind. God is not a man that he should lie. So when he says in his word, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? That's one of the hardest areas right there for us to trust God. How can he let my loved one die? Uh, I'm going to share something with you. For some of you who don't have intimate experiences with God, and I know some do, some don't. So we have to handle the ones that don't. Let's deal with this. I remember, <clears throat> excuse me, years ago in 2013, it was September. I woke up out of, out of my bed. My, my bedroom's upstairs. Milton's bedroom is downstairs where all the hospital equipment is in. And I had bedroom furniture and all that, so mine is all upstairs. I woke up from a sleep. And as soon as I sat up in the bed, I saw a vision, a vision, y'all. Tell you how God can prepare you. He already knows what's coming. I saw a vision of Milton with a burlap sack over his head. And the first thing that came to my mind, Lord, what's going on in Milton's head? What's wrong? I knew he was telling me, something's wrong and you're going to find out what it is soon. So I go downstairs to check up on Milton and he says, baby, he says, you got any aspirin? I have a headache. All right now. Okay, Lord, I'm listening. So I give him one aspirin because he's on blood thinners. The aspirin works. He, I sit with him till he falls asleep. Listen to the story. I'm sitting in the recliner next to his bed, keeping an eye out till he falls back asleep. And then I go back to sleep. I wake up and he wakes up. We're almost waking up at the same time. And he, and I said, how does your head feel? He said, oh, my head is fine, baby. Thank you. But my eye is bothering me. I jumped up. I looked at his eye. And his eye looked like a tomato. I knew then my husband had a cerebral hemorrhage going on. I called the paramedics. See, God was already preparing me, so I wasn't like, ah! I called the paramedics. Now, everything in me is perfectly still. God has me in perfect peace now. I called the paramedics. I'm very strategic. The Lord just had me totally settled. But my heart, my emotions were hurting for him because I don't want to see him go through anything. So we take off to the hospital. They do all kind of x-rays. They find out he's got a tumor in the back of his, of his head. So what happens? They send him down to another hospital. So I'm down there with him. 
and they tell him we have to do surgery. They talk to his primary physician. They cannot do surgery. Why? Congestive heart failure, heart only works at 25%. He will die just going under anesthesia. So even though the tumor was operable, he was not. Mm, you hear me? So I asked Milton, I said, now, this is what I want you to tell me. This is your body. This is your life. I will never try to dictate to you. Listen to what I'm saying. I asked him, what do you want? He said, I don't want surgery. I said, you want to talk to your son about it? He said, yeah, that's fine. The three of us had a powwow and every one of us, was we were in total agreement. No surgery. So I take Milton home. When I get home, I have a dream. And the Lord gives me this dream. Listen to this. God will prepare you if you're praying through the whole thing. He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him, not the problem, not the waves of the ocean on him. And when I went to bed and I woke up that morning, right before I woke up, I saw Milton in the dream looking up at me from the hospital bed, apologetically saying, baby, I'm so tired. I knew then God was letting me know Milton wanted to go home to be with the Lord. Am I going to fight him on that? How dare, if I love my husband, why would I try to insist that he stay in a body where he's tired and suffering? He's sick and tired of being sick and tired. Come on now. Where is your real love? Where is your motivation? So I have a talk with him. And I said, if you want me to pray for you to, to be healed, I will fight tooth and nail with you in prayer. But Milton, if you're tired, I didn't tell him about the dream. If you're tired and if you want to go home to be with the Lord, I will not fight you. I release you because I don't live in your body. You know what you've been through. You know when you're at the end of your rope. I will support you either way. You know what my husband said? And he's always been quick to ask me to pray for him. He said, thank you, baby. And not once did he ask me to pray for his healing. Not once. And I did not because I knew God was showing me he didn't want that. He wanted to go. How many of you are battling the person who's trying to let go and you won't let them let go? How many of you are insisting on this surgery and that surgery and that surgery and that surgery? How dare you let go of life? You're too young. And, how, and I ask you, how dare you cling to them and make them stay here? When they're, when they're in agony. Do you really love them? Or is this about you? All right. I'm done. I'm not trying to fuss. Just trying to make you see it from another perspective other than what about me? What about me? What about me? All right. Now, when you live for the Lord and you walk with the Lord, there are times when everything around you is going crazy. You have got to labor to enter in to his rest. And yes, I'm telling you, whether there's death, whether there's sickness, whether there are problems, whether there's a crisis, whether it's bad news, whatever the case is, God can and God will, if you allow it, he will keep you in perfect peace. As soon as you feel your emotions welling up, which is humanly natural, Step into the supernatural and say, Lord, calm me down. Take the anxiety out. Give me your peace. I don't like feeling afraid like this. I'm afraid. Remove the fear. I'm angry. Remove the anger. I want to cuss them out. Shut my mouth and calm my spirit. Take the anger out. Take the hurt out. You don't have to react just because you feel it. 
You don't have to give in to those emotions because you don't get along with this one at your job. And you know that one on your job doesn't like you. And you know that one over there is jealous of you. And this one over here wishes you would just drop dead. The person in your family, you've been at odds for years. You can't handle them. They can't handle you. Mm-hmm. And you up on them, they up or you just checking each other out and mm -hmm, whatever. And this strife is in the air. Why? Because you have not entered into his rest. I don't care how angry a person is with you. God can keep you in perfect peace. He can stop you from being hurt. He can stop you from being angry. If you yield that to him. But if you're not yielding it, baby, and you're determined to feel it, you're determined to react to it, you're determined to act it out, everything you're feeling, every thought that's going through your mind, all the abundance that's in your heart, whether it's abundant hatred, resentment, whatever, that's on you. But you don't have to succumb to the elements, the beggarly elements of this world. You don't have to succumb to the beggarly elements of your flesh. You don't have to succumb to fear, to the demonic attacks that tell you that you ain't never going to get nothing out of God. God doesn't love you. God doesn't care for you. This world ain't making me happy, so I might as well stop the world and jump off. No, no. See, some of the reasons some of you struggle with believing in God is because you're so focused on yourself. You're self-absorbed. The world revolves around you. How you feel about this. How you feel about that. What you need from this. What you need from that. What you want them to do. What you want them to say. How you want them to handle this. How you want them to handle that. And it better make me happy. Or I'm not a happy camper. And if I'm not a happy camper, baby, guess what? Nobody's happy. Because I'm going to make everybody miserable. That's the way some of us live our lives. Does that sound like peace to you? Does that sound like you're resting? See, one of the things the Lord let me know. <clears throat> he is an anchor. Hebrew chapter 6. Okay. Verse 17 to 20. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of of promise, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor to the soul, an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Woo! I'm going to stop at 19. That's really what I want to say. You know, <laughs> God is the anchor of our soul. If you look at a ship bouncing around in stormy weather, and they drop anchor so that they're not straying over here to the right or drifting over there for miles, getting lost at sea. That anchor holds them, baby. It holds them in place. And see, when God is working in your life, when you have yielded your flesh to the control of the Holy Spirit, when you have yielded your freedoms, you have yielded your will over to the will of God, when you have yielded your idiosyncrasies over to the ways and the character of God, the fruits of his Holy Spirit, what ends up happening, listen to this, what ends up happening is God can keep you in perfect peace. Listen, life doesn't have to be hard, y'all. Sometimes we make it harder 
than what it really is. <clears throat> Part of it is because we take ourselves too seriously. We put too much store in how we feel. We put too much store in our own plans, the plans of mice and men. Hmm. We put too much store in the things we value. And when you really, really, really begin to die to yourself, that's when life gets so much easier. So much easier. Relationships. You know what? When God heals the wounds of your soul, people can't hurt you like they used to. You don't have to say, what did you mean when you said so-and-so? Well, did you forget what I did for you? Why didn't you remember to thank me? Uh, well, how come this happened like that? Are you mad at me? And you just go through life with all these questions. Why, why, why? How comes, how comes, how comes? Oh, I don't understand. No, you don't even have time to worry about stuff like that when God's healing you. Because you're not operating out of the self-absorbed or the self-absorption of your emotional wounds. Because there are none to be operating out of. When God heals those wounds, baby, your sights are higher. You're not living at life based on how people are responding to me, 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 me. You're not self-absorbed anymore. That's what emotional scars will do. They will keep you self-absorbed. And the worst thing you want on your foot, for example, is an ingrown toenail. And some of us are more ingrown than we are grown. Hmm. And we don't understand that ingrown toenails, just using that as an example, can set up infections. It's easy to hurt, easy to irritate, and it sets up infections. And some of you have infections in your spirit. Why? Because you're not going to God. Why? Because you want to handle life yourself. Why? Because you don't really believe that God can handle it, that God will do what he said he's going to do. And you live a life of infection after infection, inflammation after inflammation, and you're flinching through life. Limping through life, scared through life, and you, 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 you're a bundle of nerves. And if you were to really be honest with yourself, you could honestly say, I really don't experience God's peace that often. That's an indication right there that your belief level is low. You may have a high profession, but your belief level is low. Mm -hmm. You're running around reacting, wondering why this one said that, why they looked at you funny, why they didn't respond to you nicely. You're too self-absorbed. There's a problem there. And that's when you have to say, okay, Lord, what's wrong with me? Whatever it is, heal me. I don't want to live my life flinching, limping, freaking out at every challenge that rears its ugly head. Life can be, you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So why is your life so heavy? Why are you so encumbered with so many cares of this world? The Bible says, cast all your care on him because he cares for you. Do you really do that? Or do you freak out? What was that old song? Freak out. But yeah, we're not dancing. We freaking. Oh, oh no, what's wrong? Oh, there's there's a problem. Oh no, problem over here. Oh, what am I gonna do? Oh Lord, oh Lord, what? Or we're like this. Yeah, they tell me to believe in the Lord, but see, I, I ain't all that sure I believe in you, Lord. I'm sorry. You don't move fast enough, and I need things done, and you're too slow. I don't even know if you even think about it. You don't even love me, do you? Are you there? Are you listening? You don't listen to me. You ignore me. You just, you bless other people, but you ignore me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know what's up. But no, baby, stop it. Oh, 
Satan has dangled the carrot in front of you and you you chomping at the bit. Running from rabbit trail to rabbit trail, from pit hole to pit hole. Be still. And I'm going to read that and I'm going to close with it. Because sometimes we just need the Lord's word to iron out some of what we're going through. Mm -hmm. Stop being a bundle of nerves, y'all. God's got you. I'm going to read it. Psalms, go with me to Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength. You know what a refuge is, don't you? Hiding place, safe haven. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathens raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Yeah, he's got your enemies, baby. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge.